In 2006, we lost Ronnie Sox of the famous Sox and Martin racing team. It was a shock to the Mopar world, and we all realized at that moment that we were not going to have our heroes around forever. Soon wrote an editorial in Mopar Collector's Guide referencing how we needed to do a Hall of Fame for the Mopar heroes that we grew up with to preserve Mopar history for the future generations. As the years went by, I ran into a good friend of mine, Jim Kramer, at a show, and he asked me when I was going to do a Mopar Hall of Fame. I must have looked at him with a yeah right look in my eyes. He proceeded to say, if you don't do it, no one else will. In my heart of hearts, I knew he was right, so in 2011, I began lining up sponsors and critical people to help me pull something together that the entire Mopar community could be proud of. What we ended up with was a number of Hall of Fame induction dinners that were held Saturday night of each Chrysler's at Carlisle event from 2012 until 2018. The Mopar Hall of Fame will go forward each preceding year in the pages of Mopar Collector's Guide magazine. This is one of those recordings made on one of those incredible nights at the Mopar Hall of Fame at Chrysler's at Carlisle. Hearst. Hearst is the most recognized word in the performance world. I bought my first Hearst shifter in 1961 and it really changed my life. Hearst shifters were the choice of all the Mopar racers. I will never forget toward the end of 1970 after I'd started driving for Buddy and Ronnie, Buddy told Ronnie and I that he was talking to another shifter company. Ronnie's response was quick. He said, Buddy, if you change the shifters in these cars, you'll be driving them. That ended that. <laughs> Hearst put together a various package, including the 68 Hemi Superstock cars. When you say the word Hearst, you can not only think of shifters, but the iconic Linda Vaughn, the greatest lady in racing. Hearst was originally called Hearst Campbell, and Mr. Campbell is with us tonight. He's 95 years young. Mr. Campbell read in 1957 about a truck wreck where it took an hour to get the driver out, and he died before they could remove him. It really bothered him. A few days later, him and George Hurst, having lunch, decided they would take on this project. Mr. Campbell was very instrumental in the development of the Jaws of Life. It took till 1970 to complete this project. Where is Mr. Campbell? Mr. Campbell? You've been very instrumental in saving a lot of lives in this country because of the jaws of life and what you did with it. How does that make you feel? Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. That's great. It's been a real pleasure to meet you today. I have never met you before. I knew of you, but I never met you. And I understand that you still have some patents on some of the Hearst Shifter products. Is that right? We still have. George and I both. Yes. Well, George is gone, so they're yours, I guess. <laughs> but he deserves the credit, too. Well, yes, sir, he did. You and him did a fantastic job with that company. And I personally want to thank you for what you did with the shifters, because what you did with the shifters made people like Ronnie Sox and myself really look good in our Hemi cars going down the drag strip. <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> pardon me. I'm happy that the Jaws of Life works, and that was the result, really, of a newspaper story in which a man was driving a truck on a section of the uh, docks down in Philadelphia, ran into the side of a railroad car, and it took him an hour and five minutes to get him out of the uh, get him out of the truck, and five minutes before he got out, he died. That doesn't happen anymore, thanks to you, sir. We hope not. That's what the attempt was to remove that time that it takes to get somebody out of a vehicle. You did a fantastic job on it, sir. Thank you very much. Now we've got a former Superstock racer, Mr. Don Glover. Where are you, Don? Come on up here, sir. 
He joined Hearst in 1967 in their engineering department, helping design and develop many of the special Hearst cars over the years, and he's going to stand up here and tell us some more about it. Go ahead, sir. Thank, thank you, Herb, and uh, good evening to everyone. It was nice to be here and quite an honor to represent Hearst. As you may know, back in 1955, George started a two two-car garage in Abington doing motor mounts and car repairs. All of this was George Hearst's beginnings. Shortly thereafter, Bill Campbell joined the company, and then the business grew into engine conversions, bumper guards, shifters. The business expanded, but not without a lot of ups and downs. They kept growing, and going and developing better shifters than any of the competition. Additional people were hired, later created the four-speed shifter, moved from Abington, Pennsylvania, to Glenside, to Willow Grove, and then to the Warminster facility in Pennsylvania. Sales increased, along with large OEM contracts with major automobile manufacturers. Hearst Campbell expanded into special products like the Jaws of Life and unique modified cars like the Hearst Olds, the 383-440 Darts, Chrysler 300, the Pontiac SSJ, Hemi Darts, Hemi Kudus, and AMX cars and many more. George was the detailed engineer that made a lot of ideas and PR person. On the other side, Bill Campbell was the detailed engineer that made a lot of his ideas work. They made a great team together. Through the years, other companies acquired Hearst, and the company, there again, there were more roller coaster times. Presently, the name still shines above the rest, and Hearst again is building great shifters and special automobiles, special performance automobiles. Bill Campbell was the keystone and the cornerstone of this legacy. At this time, I'd like to recognize some people that worked at Hearst Campbell and Hearst and I'd like each of those people to stand as I call them and hold your applause till they're all standing. Okay, the first person be Don Lane, one of the original uh, engineers. Please stand, Don, if you can. Jim Kerr, original customer service person. Bob Kenny, engineering manager. Howard Misalis, PR and sales. Marty Danko, engineering. Bob Regal, Hemi Underglass, we all know him, right? <laughs> Larry Weiner, Performance West. We have Dale Dotson, Dale. Uh, and we have Matt um, Keyhole. And we have Alex Ortega. Thank you very much. Let's give everyone a hand. Thank you, sir. I had the pleasure. Is on? Okay. I had the pleasure of working with a lot of these guys. Jimmy Kerr, I think, was the first guy that I met at Hearst. Howard, known him forever. He's been around forever, I think. <laughs> but... Uh, these people were great. They were the racer's friend at the drag strip. When, uh, I believe I'm right, Jimmy built the shifter for my 65 Hemi car. I wanted the shifter moved back by my hip instead of coming out of the dash with that funny looking lever they had. And he fixed me the, one of the first hockey stick shifters and it just worked beautiful. And uh, the rest is history. If you like this video, please smash the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this one online, hit the subscribe to Mopar TV button. It's totally free. Also, if you'd like to support the Mopar Hall of Fame, 
and to vote for future inductees, go to MoparCollectorsGuide.com and subscribe to the only Mopar magazine that matters. A portion of your subscription will go to help keep Mopar history alive for future generations.